Hello, I'm Rachel Jones for the Finance News Network. Joining me from La Pitago is Managing Director Joe Walsh. Joe, welcome back to FNM. Good morning, Rachel. Good to be here. Good to see you. Now, Lapidico is targeting commercial production of 5,000 ton per annum lithium carbonate equivalent by 2023. What can you tell me about this? We completed the definitive feasibility study for our phase one project earlier this year. We're now moving it towards a final investment decision uh, targeting the second quarter of next year. And then we'll be eyeing first production in early 23 when we ramp up that plant in Abu Dhabi for producing lithium um, hydroxide. Thanks, Joe. Now to your strategic collaboration and technology license agreement with Cornish Lithium. What does this involve? So we announced this at the beginning of the week and we've entered into a strategic collaboration arrangement with Cornish Lithium. Uh, they have interests in the southwest of England uh, and those deposits are amenable to being treated with Lepidico's proprietary process technologies. So Cornish Lithium has spent about six months doing due diligence and spent about a quarter of a million dollars on test work um, using our technologies. And what this arrangement will mean is they'll have a process technology to treat these mineralizations in Cornwall and produce not just lithium hydroxide, but also the byproducts that our processes uh, allow. So it really is a strategic tie up here on, a, on something of a different style of mineralization to what we see at our project in Namibia. And what can you tell me about the repayment of convertible notes? So th this was uh, a, an important part of balance sheet repair for Lapidico. So the $4 million Canadian proceeds from the transaction with Cornish Lithium has already been used to retire in full that convertible note debt obligation that we, we had. So Lapidico is now debt free with a healthy cash position to see it into 2021. Now let's talk about your phase one project. Could you provide an update on the mining operation in Namibia? So the assets in Namibia are all ready to go. It's fully permitted there uh, for the mines and the building of that small concentrator. Uh, since we last spoke, we've completed the environmental social impact assessment there, and that's uh, uh, evaluated the project as a category B project under the IFC standards, which is extremely unusual for a mining project. And it really goes to the heart of us having very good environmental and social credentials at all of our projects. And what can you tell me about the chemical plant in Abu Dhabi? So that's tracking a little bit behind the uh, the mine and the concentrator. We are uh, working on the environmental social impact assessment for the Abu Dhabi chemical conversion plant now. We're on track to have that completed by the end of this quarter, by the end of this month. And we should have all approvals and permits in place before the end of the next quarter, which really should set us up nicely for that, uh, that planned final investment decision. And Joe, what can you tell me about the US government interest in the project? At the end of October, we entered into a mandate arrangement with the US government's Development Finance Corporation um, for provision of debt funding for the Namibian part of uh, the phase one uh, development. So like, this is uh, this is some, some fairly hard funding to be able to, to get. Um, it's, the requirements are quite onerous, but again, because of our excellent environmental and social credentials, it does mean that we have an opportunity to get this, this type of funding, which has extremely attractive uh, um, uh, fundamentals to it for our shareholders. It's very low cost funding. That's excellent news. And to the last question now, Joe, is there anything else you'd like to add? So I think that just following on from uh, DFC's interest, um, the other element to that is the US State Department's list of 35 critical minerals. And I think that our phase one project is unique globally in that it will produce four of those 35, and in particular, cesium and rubidium, which aren't just critical, but they're also uh, strategic in nature. So um, we are looking at leveraging those unique elements associated with our project because we believe it's the world's only ore reserve and mineral resource of cesium, rubidium and lithium. 
uh, to be able to bring a new source of supply of those uh, three critical minerals to the market. Joe Walsh, thanks for the update. Good to see you again. Thank you very much, Rachel.